And so when we look at uh, what art is, perhaps we can say that art is a form of communication in which um, we can see two partners, basically, uh, producers, that's one partner or a group of partners, and evaluators, another group. So usually producers of art are males of bird, fish, and some other species, whereas females who have an artistic sense, they appear to be evaluators of art because this is how they select males for uh, sexual gain and uh, procreation, basically. So you can also use uh, a simpler metaphor. Males are sort of artists, whereas females are art critics because they have an exceptional sense of art. Um, so in the, in the world of fish, birds, etc., many uh, animals produce like bird nests. I'll show you some examples later. They show ornaments like peacocks, for example, or perform uh, rituals like Paradise Bird. Uh, you can find examples either in, in textbooks or scientific journals, or, or you can search on the internet. So uh, this, the capacity of females to evaluate uh, evaluate beauty, beauty to, you know, to sense this art is a kind of ticket for procreation. Uh, and this is a picture that actually perplexed Darwin he was desperate to explain using only natural selection as to why uh, creatures like this peacock would want to you know, show this ornamental display, this colorful display, uh, really aesthetically very, very pleasing. And Darwin was desperate when he, he only, uh, when he was only using natural selection. But later on, he realized that really the purpose of this is the uh, aesthetic or sexual selection. So a peacock, a male, shows this before females, and this is, you know, the ticket to procreation. But by the way, this is not the only way of uh, natural aesthetics. So here is an example of the bird of paradise. This is quite a spectacular display. If you have the opportunity, you can find on the YouTube beautiful displays of the um, ritual, amazing ritual that these birds of paradise use in order to males, in order to attract females. And here, is, here are pictures of uh, love nests produced by some uh, male birds. You can see what they do. They produce a kind of structure that looks like a nest. Uh, but inside it, uh, they put some colorful object to attract females, and females visit actually these nests, perhaps one one by one, and when they select one that looks uh, the most aesthetically pleasing to them, they give a signal to a male partner for the sexual game. And here's one um, interesting scientific paper about the art in the fish world, there was uh, quite an interesting story a few years ago when a group of Japanese fishermen, they spotted uh, a very interesting constructions, circles at the sea bottom. You can see a picture uh, in the corner. This looks very ornamental uh, and they didn't know how to explain it. So they saw it for the first time. So they alerted uh, some other people. Uh, even the journalists, so, you know, uh, this uh, was widely publicized, but no one uh, had any ideas to the origin of these circles. They called them ornamental circles, but few Japanese uh, scientists actually heard of this, and they started investigating. Uh, and after a few years of research, they finally established that the creature who creates these ornamental circles at the sea bottom is one tiny fish species called pufferfish. You can see a picture of this pufferfish. I think now you can also watch uh, a, a documentary made by Sir David Attenborough about this. It's about three minutes uh, called Fish Courtship. And he says that, that this pufferfish uh, is the greatest artist in nature. So it takes about, I mean, this is a very tiny fish. It's about maybe 10 to 15 centimeters long. And it only uses its uh, body as a motor and fins. 
to, and it works actually for about seven days to produce these circles, which are roughly one and a half meters in diameter. So imagine uh, a tiny fish, 10, 15 centimeters working to produce something that's about, um, you know, much bigger than its own body. It takes about uh, a week of relentless labor to produce this, and then they wait for females uh, to spot, to inspect, uh, and wait for a signal for the sexual gain. Uh, so this was the first time that scientists identified a species of puffer fish producing these ornamental circles. And you can see here from this paper, scientific uh, paper, published in a very reputable scientific journal, the date is um, April 2018 or August 2018, so only a few years ago. But then after this, a group of Australian scientists, so this was pufferfish living around the uh, Japanese islands. But after that, Australian scientists actually identify, identified similar circles around the coast of Australia. But the difference was that these circles were located much, much deeper in the sea. The Japanese circles, uh, the depth of sea at which uh, they were located, but, you know, very uh, shallow, about 10 meters, not, in, you know, not more than that, not deeper than that. But these Australian circles have been identified at a depth of about 100 meters. So uh, at the sea bottom, 100 meter deep, there is no light, actually. So, uh, and this puzzled scientists how, uh, you know, these fishes, this, you know, the species produces these ornamental circles in dark, and then females in inspect them in dark. So the conclusion of this study is that Australian and Japanese pufferfish are actually two different species that they, uh, but they develop the same form of art at different geological, uh, you know, geographical locations. So, uh, and there are many other examples of animal artistic senses. And is um, another paper, this is basically scientific evidence that I'm presenting, which shows how these animal artistic or the animal capacity to appreciate the beauty actually has continuity in the human culture. So this paper examined a location in South Africa and local farmers, the, um, you know, the sheep farmers, and how they deal that, you know, the predators, animals that attack and kill their sheep, these are sort of, you know, you can see pictures of these animals. They, they look beautiful. Jackal and Karkal. And, you know, in the culture of natives uh, who do sheep farming, these animals are negative or projected negatively because they kill their sheep. But then natives have a sort of sophisticated understanding of aesthetics because they want to view these animals not as uh, negatives, not as thieves, but by looking at their bodies, they see in them some kind of superior aesthetics, and they want really to project a picture of them as very cunning and aesthetically pleasing beauty, so they, they don't want to make enemies of them, uh, and they basically reduce if you look at the title of this paper, Beauty or Beast, uh, Farmers' Dualistic Views and the Influence of Aesthetic Appreciation on Tolerance. Keyword is tolerance towards the black jackal and caracal. So the farmers, they could actually kill these animals, simply use guns and kill them, but they don't want to do that. They want to tolerate them. They don't want to allow these animals to kill their stock of sheep but uh, they want to live in harmony with them, perhaps let some, um, uh, in a controlled way, uh, use their sheep, but then uh, survive together. And this is called coevolution. So this is not nothing to do with science. This is how natives, let me correct myself, nothing to do with the modern science, which has a completely different attitude. This is how native science that I mentioned in week three operates. So natives actually want to live in harmony with their surroundings. So in their world, in their culture, these animals uh, that are viewed them as predators, 
actually are not viewed as negative predators, but natives want to live in harmony with them. And, you know, the justification for that is this natural artistic sense, because simply they see these animals as beautiful, as, you know, impressive creatures that are not uh, less impressive than humans, for example. So this was just an introduction to the concept of artistic agency and the person who defines so artistic agency is something to exist in nature. It's a nature void phenomenon. Uh, it's not only a human artifact, but animals. Uh, and I would probably argue that even plants or cells like bacteria have their own uh, artistic agency, but 